We are joined now by Spencer Holbrook of Letterman Row, our Ohio State site at On3. And the first question I have to ask you, Spencer, do you respect the Wolverine, the Michigan site? Uh, hmm. Answer will, the question! I will say this. The rivalry is something that you have to respect. You have to work it every day. You 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 have respect for the history. Uh, yeah, that's basically what Ryan Day and and uh, Jim Harbaugh have both said, you know, they were each asked the same exact question in a way. Uh, do you respect the other one? And, you know, Jim Harbaugh was like, well, we're, in prep we're preparing for Ohio State. We're, well, he said Ohio. We're preparing for Ohio. And Ryan Day said a lot of the same things. Well, it goes to the preparation. It goes to how you prepare for it every day. Neither one had much of an answer in the way of do you respect Jim Harbaugh or do you respect Ryan Day? And that's adding to the new flavors of this rivalry where these two head coaches just simply do not like each other. What would you say is your respect level for Ryan Day and, and their staff? Um, it's, uh, it's all about our preparation for Ohio. Um, you know, the days, the minutes, the hours, everything leading up to this game, um, you know, that's where our focus is. Preparing ourselves and planning, gonna practice and then execute. So, uh, I mean, Anything else is irrelevant, um, you know, when you get into this kind of this kind of big game week. Because of what's happened, this investigation, uh, it doesn't seem like that now. Does that sadden you or does it energize you? I think, you know, I was taught that, you know, the way you respect the rivalry is to work it every day. And um, whether it's in the, um, you know, the weight room, whether it's, you know, a game planning, um, you know, talking to your players, um, you know, periods and practice in the, you know, during the spring periods and practice in the preseason and, um, and, and that's it. And so, you know, we do, we respect the rivalry and, and, um, you know, certainly excited to play here on Saturday. They hate each other. And I mean, the fan base has already hated each other, but I feel like that's been taken up about a hundred notches this year. Yeah, for sure. And you talk about, uh, you know, the, the private investigation firm rumors that uh, haven't really come up with anything yet. Um, the uh, Jim Harbaugh suspension, the the third base comment from 2021, mm -hmm. Josh Gaddis calling Ohio State soft right after he left Michigan or before he even left Michigan to go to Maryland. Um, everything that's gone on the last two years, um, the beat, beat score 100 on him that was allegedly said during the COVID year with Ryan Day, uh, canceling the game because of COVID when Ohio State doesn't feel like Michigan actually had COVID. Like everything that has happened the last three years has added a uh, new spice to this. And then you bring in the fact that the photos from the Connor Stallions investigation with uh, the sideline at the horseshoe last year and the video of all the players pointing up has added that. It just keeps piling up. And yeah. for Ryan Day and Jim Harbaugh, you know, Ryan Day was asked today, how, how do you separate the personal feelings in this rivalry? And Ryan Day said, yeah, it's been difficult. So he's even acknowledging that it's pretty personal. And the fact and that he doesn't get to see Jim Harbaugh on Saturday makes it kind of lose a little bit of that luster. And oh, by the way, they're both 11 and 0. Like, yeah. <laughs> the, the winner the winner's going to the Big Ten Championship game. The winner's probably going to the college football playoff. The loser got to go last year too, but I don't, I don't think the loser's going to get to go this year. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so either because, uh, you know, that would that would mean that, you know, if Florida State takes a loss with, with Tate Rodemaker. That would mean Texas probably takes a loss. That would mean, you know, Oregon probably loses this week, but then uh, Oregon State beats Washington and, and Washington State probably has to beat. Like there's so many things that have to happen uh, for the loser to get in. I just don't see that happening. So the stakes are as high as they've ever been. We don't, I know we said that last year, but last year it still felt like, well, Ohio State make a case if they lose. Um, and this year Ohio State could make a case if they lose, but – the case gets harder when the 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 building blocks around them kind of stack up against them, and uh, you know the the players know the stakes. Uh, you know this 2021 recruiting class for Ohio State features Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Buka and Kyle McCord and Travion Henderson and JT Tuimolau and Jack Sawyer and right on down the line. It's one of the best recruiting classes talent wise in Ohio State history. They have zero wins against Michigan. They're over two, and a lot of those guys are leaving for the NFL. So they were talking about that today, even of like the stakes for this for us to leave our legacy at Ohio State are. You have to win this game because when you get asked by alums, what was your record against Michigan? And you come back with a goose egg, like that's not something you can do. I want to tell you about Roback. The most comfortable, stylish, perfect hoodies in the world. I'm wearing one right now. I'm wearing navy blue. And I love the Roback performance hoodie so much. 
If it were socially acceptable, it is the only garment I would ever wear. There are certain weddings and funerals I probably could not wear it to. Though, I will say watching Andrew Whitworth rock the hoodie under the, the suit on Thursday Night Football gives me confidence that I might be able to wear my Roback Performance hoodie everywhere. But they also have Performance Crews. They have joggers. They have shorts. They have shirts. You name it, they got it. R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com, Roback.com. Use the promo code STAPLES for 20% off your first order. You got to get one of these hoodies. You will never, ever want to wear anything else. I promise. Roback.com, promo code STAPLES, 20% off your first order. Right, and that's what the Michigan players had to deal with for over a decade. And now they've got cla- they've got a class that some of those guys are going to go to the NFL and be like, did I was I three and zero against Ohio State? Yeah, uh, if they win this, yes, they were. So that that's a big one, and it, it's a it's such a big turn. How much pressure is on Ryan Day? Not just because of what's happened the last two years, but to beat an acting coach. Like he's not even playing as Jim Harbaugh this week. He's playing as Sharon Moore. Yeah, it's funny because whether Jim Harbaugh coaches or not, Ryan Day right now has a losing record against Michigan. But the funny thing about it is Jim Harbaugh has a losing record against Ohio State. So both Mm -hmm. of these guys have just been trying to crawl their way out of this this rut that both programs were in and, and Ohio State's currently in. I think a lot of pressure is on Ryan Day. We've heard all year. Are we getting Michigan Ryan Day or Georgia Ryan Day? And that's something that the Ohio State beat has kind of latched onto of like trying to take a temperature of day because Against Michigan last year, the entire week, it was the most tense I've ever seen Ryan Day. And it showed on Saturday when when he was out there on the field, when uh, he was coaching in the game. You could see how tense he was, and the players followed suit. Against Georgia, he said, we're going to let it rip. We're going to play loose. We have a second lease on life. He was joking around with some of the media members he saw in the tunnel before the Peach Bowl. And it showed with the creativity and the lack of of being tense and the way that he was calling the game. So we've kind of latched on to the Georgia Ryan Day and Michigan Ryan Day. You need to see Georgia Ryan Day in the Michigan game to untap, to you know, tap into all of that potential that Ohio State has on this roster. Because I know that it doesn't look like it the last two years. Ohio State has more talent than Michigan. And that's probably the thing that's the most difficult for Ryan Day to grasp with is like knowing you have the most talent and still being over two in your last two. Well, one one thing that is undeniable is that Ohio State's defense is better than the one that played against Michigan last year that, that gave up. Three huge, I, I the the long Cornelius Johnson touchdowns, and then the the long Edwards touchdown. Those are the backbreakers, and it feels like this team just doesn't give up plays like that. Yeah, they've given up one play of over forty yards this season. It was a fumble, Ruski cousin, uh, tush push cousin by Kyle Manungai at Rutgers. So Rutgers has the the longest play on Ohio State this year, forty five yards. Everything else has been under forty yards, which is remarkable when you think about the plays they gave up last year not just in the the Georgia game and the Michigan game but to Toledo and and a couple of the other opponents on the schedule where you just would not expect that from this Ohio State team with the talent they have but defensively they've talked all year they ran all offseason if you gave up a, a pass play of more than 20 yards you ran if a ball went over your head you ran and if you gave up a touchdown on defense you ran even more and that instilled this no big plays everything in front of us keep uh offenses having to snap the ball and it has really paid off for them. The more that offenses have to snap the ball against this defense, the better the defense is because the defense is talented enough to make up for if they give up a play like that. So the things that they've done with this defense, Jim Knowles' evolution as a coordinator have been remarkable, and none of it matters if Saturday doesn't go the way you need it to. Exactly. I mean, well, and, and we know about Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Buka and what they could do in terms of the passing game. But how much does what Travion Henderson's been able to do lately open up the rest of the offense? Yeah, he's been a revelation of sorts. And everyone knew who he was, right? Uh, As a freshman, he was great. He has the freshman rushing record at Ohio State in a single game. I think it was 270 yards in the game. So, like, the potential was always there. His first career game, he had a 70-yard touchdown uh, catch and run. But the layer of this offense that was simply missing when he wasn't in the lineup is something that you can't really quantify because it's. I think it slowed down Kyle McCord's development as quarterback because the way that teams had were able to defend this team, not knowing that the, the running game wasn't what it should be, the way that uh, he had to put a little bit more pressure on himself, knowing the running game wasn't there, the offensive line's development wasn't there. Since Travian Henderson came back, this has been a completely different offense, and they're really starting to hit their stride with 32. Uh, 
you know, being the bell cow there, you, you look at 200 yards uh, in back-to-back games there, and then now he just has the 75-yard run. He's got a nine-yard touchdown run in three straight games, which is an area – the only reason I throw that quirky stat out there is because they've really struggled in the red zone this year. 32 comes back, you're getting nine to 15-yard touchdown runs, which you just mm-hmm. weren't getting early in the year. He's been – the difference for this offense and the reason that they've been able to take that step forward. So how do you see this playing out? Does it, does it look like Ohio state Notre Dame, which was a grinded out, you know, long drives, you know, 15 play drive type game where there, there weren't that many opportunities to score. Or do you think it looks a little more like last year's game against Michigan, where there were some big plays, the score did get pretty high. I think there's got to be somewhere in the middle that I can rest on. I, I, in my score prediction, I think the total is, is 44, um, Mm -hmm. which is right around where I think Vegas is looking at this game. So like, I I do think that they're, they've got it kind of pinned. Well, I don't think it's going to be as a rock fight as rock fighty as Notre Dame was like 17, 14 just doesn't, doesn't seem right to me, but also it's not going to look like, uh, you know, Washington, Oregon, where you've got two offenses just going at it and, and throwing haymakers. These defenses are going to lead the way for Ohio State and Michigan. And, you know, Kyle McCord and J.J. McCarthy, the storylines are there for those two guys. J.J. at one time was a Heisman Trophy candidate this year. The running games for both of them are really explosive. But when you go against these defenses, it is it is so tough to come by yards. And Ryan Day said it best in his press conference on Tuesday, like one yard equals three. In, in game like this. And so like, you're going to have to grind some things out, but I do think there's some points to be scored uh, if you can hit the right things at the right moment, especially with the athletes that Ohio state has on offense. So wh- where are the Ohio state players right now? I know Denzel Burke was pretty emotional talking about this this week. Wh- where are their heads at? They are, I think exactly where Ohio state wants them. And that is like locked in on, on the moment that is, a, that is at hand. Uh, I'm impressed by the way they understand the stakes and that, that might sound stupid, but because like for college football nerds around the country, like we understand the stakes of this game, but sometimes like college football players, they don't even pay attention to what's going on. They're just playing. Or they're deliberately kept from the stakes by their coaches. Like they don't want them to know. Yeah, for sure. And like, you know, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. mentioned the rankings today. He mentioned the fact that it's for the Big Ten. He mentioned the fact that, you know, he hasn't beaten Michigan. He understands what this would mean for his legacy uh, as a Buckeye who's probably going to not probably, but is going to be on his way out the door right after this season. So, like, the stakes are very clear to these players. And Denzel Burke said, we're going to win. We're going to get it done for Ohio. The players have done a good job, even though a lot of them are not from Ohio, of embracing the southern side of the rivalry. They've embraced what it means to go up to Ann Arbor, uh, even though they're they're winless up there. A lot of those juniors are 0-1. So, like, the stakes have been made clear to them, and they've latched onto them. They understand what it means. And they even have mentioned a little bit about what this means for Ryan Day and and playing for their head coach. Denzel Burke said that as well. We're going to play this game for our head coach, and I think there's something to be said about that. Isn't it strange? I mean – you got two 11 and 0 teams where both of them feel like they are playing for their head coach, either Absolutely. for the reputation or because one, you know, one suspended or because of how people feel about Ryan Day. Like it is, it's bizarre. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Day's lost six games in his career. Two of them are to Michigan and that's just not good enough. So that's what this is. I, that's why I think it's the best rivalry in, in all of sports, you know, even Nick Saban loses to Auburn sometimes and, and people still are like, okay, well, he's won a national championship. Well, Ohio State almost won a national championship despite losing to Michigan last year. And people still would have questioned Ryan Day because he didn't beat Michigan for the second straight year. You can't lose three straight. You can't lose three straight. And that hasn't happened in the last 30 years in this rivalry for Ohio State. And the the ramifications, if they do, uh, I don't even want to start to begin to think because that, you know, covering that and, and talking to fans about that would be uh, interesting to say the least. And so Ohio State definitely is playing for Ryan Day. And then the free Harbaugh stuff, it is what it is. I mean, those, those guys can manufacture a lot. Uh, you know, Kirby Smart tells his team they're going to go seven and five every year. And right. nobody believes that. So, like, if you want to tell yourself that Jim Harbaugh has done nothing wrong, that's completely fine. You can manufacture your own motivation. But, like, Ohio State has that and they don't have to yeah. manufacture anything. Well, and the day thing's interesting too, because you, you've got all the rumors about all the private investigation stuff. If that's anywhere near true and he loses, like that is the definition of the phrase hoisted by your own petard. Like the worst thing that can happen to him is lose without Jim Harbaugh on the other sideline. 
Yeah, because then the, pr- the pressure gets ratcheted up. He doesn't have a Jim Harbaugh problem. Then he's got a Michigan problem. I think there's a big yeah. difference because Jim Harbaugh clearly had a Urban Meyer problem. And we've oh, seen yeah. that he can beat Ohio State. You know, he can do it against Ohio State. He can get the job done, build the program the way he wants to, and beat the Buckeyes. But he couldn't do it against Urban Meyer. Right now, I think Ryan Day a little bit with two straight has a Jim Harbaugh issue. If he loses on Saturday, then you've got a Michigan problem. And nobody in Columbus, you know, Gene Smith as the departing athletic director who's going to retire at the end of this year, he doesn't want to go out with a three-game losing streak to Michigan. This is as important to him as it is to anybody. And he's not even going to be, you know – in the game. He's just going to be up in one of the boxes uh, watching the game. So all of those factors have the pressure squarely on Ohio State. Um, But this is also a team that has already won five games on the road. This program only plays six road games once every like 70 years. And they're playing six road games this year. They call themselves road warriors. They understand the stakes. Like everything seems to be lining up for this team to go do something special. Now they just have to go do it. And that's going to be easier said than done because of how good Michigan is. How does Ryan Day handle the the rivalry aspect of because Urban Meyer, you know, different coaches do things different ways. Some some coaches say this is just another week and blah blah. blah. Urban Meyer always made sure this was never just another week. This was always yeah. special, always different. How how does Day handle that? Yeah, Urban wouldn't even let you wear blue in the Woody because that was the color of Michigan. So like the the intensity that Urban brought to that rivalry showed in his seven and zero record. And maybe people think that Ryan Day should be a little bit more like that, but. The way Ryan Day talks about the rivalry, he respects it by preparing for it. He respects it by working for it. He respects it by by doing the things that you're supposed to do to win every game, not just the Michigan game. And, and that kind of turns a few people off, especially because he's a New Hampshire native. He's not an Ohio guy. You know, Jim Trussell's from Ohio, uh, Urban Meyer from Ohio, Luke Fickle even from Ohio, even though he didn't win the game. Uh, Ryan Day just goes about it as, you know, he understands the magnitude. He understands the stakes. Um, last year, I think he made even too big of a deal of it. And that's hard to say because it's the game, but you saw the results of, of what happened when he poured every single ounce of intensity into it. And it led to a tense game, a, a, a decent game plan, not a great game plan and a 20 point loss. So he's tweaked it a little bit. He still, uh, works it every single day that that clock still keeps ticking 365 when it kicks off on Saturday, it'll, it'll get back to 365 for the next year because that's what they do. But, um, you know, they're, they're, each coach has a different way of doing it, but he did learn under Urban Meyer, so he does bring some of those traits into the game. Well, Ryan Day and Jim Harbaugh may not respect one another, but I respect you, Spencer. <laughs> and I respect you, Andy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, Watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.